howdy, howdy, folks, and thank you for listening to the Sheriff Cast. A quick word from the horse's mouth on all things paddy wagon. Let's keep you in touch with the climate of our company. Why? <laughs> well, because you asked for it. Let's keep the communication lines smooth and the gossip to a minimum. And let's learn, grow, and be better every day, not just for ourselves, but for those around us. Well, another week has gone by, and so yet another Sheriff cast. Or should I say Sheriff Files, perhaps? Because we're going to talk a lot this week about the stuff that we think is out there, but we don't have any proof for it. You know, the conspiracy theories, the boogeyman, the Bigfoots, guys. Um, gotta, gotta touch on it. But before we get to that, I just want to say, because I know I usually start these off bitching and moaning at you guys, I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for all the hard work and effort that is going into the month of May 2018, perhaps the best month on the books, um, not necessarily revenue-wise, but just in terms of straightforward, simple, clean services, coherent and cohesive crew members. I I really couldn't ask for much more, guys. Um, All of the, the caterings that we did, virtually every single one of them, went off without a hitch. Um, and I couldn't be prouder of that. I hope that you guys will take a moment, kind of look around at each other, and uh, and be proud of that together as well, uh, because it's something that we we did very well. Um, and and I think that that is the level that we should strive to operate at all the time. Um, and hopefully, you guys feel the same. Um, on the contrast, this week. Uh, The last seven days have been quite difficult around the old paddy wagon HQ. I don't know if you guys have shared that same sentiment. I know that it's worn on some of you, but for me personally, um, it's uh, one of the hardest weeks I've had in a while, and it's been a hard week to cap off, kind of a hard month for me personally, but, um, you know, pretty much every day uh, from Sunday to Sunday, there was some kind of major catastrophe, some kind of huge uh, issue that really just put me in a uh, very low, low place. Uh, in my energy level, in my uh, interest, in my um, mental focus, uh, you know, when I, when these things happen to the company and I know that you guys feel them. Uh, for me, I, I shoulder them completely. Uh, and I take them home with me and I carry them with every interaction that I have, with every person that I encounter. So, uh, man, when you have a week like last week, like this this past week, um, you know, I walk out on the other side feeling really depleted and defeated and... Uh, you know, uh, I know that, like I said, I know some of you guys feel that, whether it, you're feeling it on your own um, or if, you know, if you're feeling it because it kind of rubs off on you. Uh, I do my best to conduct myself professionally uh, throughout these tribulations. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard <laughs> when it's consistent, when it's just, back-to-back uh, consecutive blows. Uh, it's hard to keep up that, that curb appeal, keep up the appearances. Um, so this is me uh, pretty much saying that um, and apologizing also for not only for those things happening, if they affected you individually or you as a team uh, negatively, which certainly they did, at least the latter of the two, um, but uh, also apologizing for again for kind of wearing that, wearing that on my sleeve, and um, uh, and I will try better to conceal some of that stress and and uh, fatigue, uh, disaster fatigue, if you will, um, in the future. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know it's the start of a brand new week and. 
Hopefully we will never have any issues ever again. Not a single one, I'm certain of it. <laughs> um, kind of brings me to my next point, guys, especially with it being the start of a new week here. Um, again, I think that uh, one of the underlying things that I am starting to see trending again in our company culture um, is something that uh, was happening a lot last year, and it's it's really disturbing to me to see it kind of um, still stewing there or starting to manifest itself again. And that was that was another um, thing that really kind of set me back in this past week um, because I truly kind of felt like I was back in 2017 dealing with a completely different crew of people. Uh, and I certainly don't want to feel that way because, you know, at the end of last year, I, I didn't want to be at my job. And it was really hard to put myself there. And I didn't look forward to interacting with any of the people there because I felt like there was no trust formed, um, there was no integrity, and there was certainly no teamwork. Um, so um, all of those being core values of our company in 2018, it's really hard to go through a week like last week and again see some of these things kind of bubbling under the surface. And I have the um, you know fortunate or unfortunate, depending on how you look at it, I have the, um, the privy to more than one opinion um, from it, all of our crew members, virtually, I get the opportunity to speak with pretty much each and every one of you one-on-one -on -one, a couple times a week at least. Um, you know, sometimes they're more pleasant than others usually. Uh, I become the, uh, the punching bag for a lot of the issues that are happening internally with the team. Um... And I'm just going to come out and say that I don't think that that's fair, uh, although I understand why it happens. I think that, uh, you know, as I've been echoing for weeks and months and years, you know, one of the keys to a successful team and one of the things that's going to put us out in front and above of any, anyone else in this industry is a very high level of open communication with each other um, and when these kinds of emotions perhaps some are rationalized and then, you know some are completely belligerent um, and just brought out of you know raw and intense emotion rage or sadness or whatever it may be um, or and some again you know maybe are a little more uh, calculated and, and considering of the facts. Um, but when these things go unaddressed over uh, X amount of time, they become resentment. And uh, that resentment always bubbles over in one form or another down the road if it's not dealt with. Um, you know, we are trimming a garden here, guys. <laughs> We we have a you know we have a beautiful topiary out in our our field and we we are trying to craft it and shape it every day and those little issues uh, that pop up those are the weeds in our garden and when we ignore them they get to be big and uh, you know I, everyone's seen a an under-maintained garden at some point or another where the weeds look like the actual plants and you can't really tell the difference, that's the pitfall that we could certainly get into if we don't continue to communicate uh, or start to communicate actively with each other um, when it's an issue. You know, a second, maybe more disturbing pitfall is when we bring accusations against each other and most of the time there's just a complete lack of all fact in these kinds of conversations. And it's important that you kind of stick to, A, a principle of non-aggression in your communication. You don't want to speak to each other in a way that uh, 
you know, you did this to me <laughs> as much as this is the way that this makes me feel or this is where I'm coming from with this. Does that make sense to you? You know, using those kinds of principles in your communication can take the conversation a lot further than ac accusations and emotional projections. So uh, when you start down this road of a more open path of communication, I would recommend that. Um, but also, you know, the, <laughs> the stuff that really doesn't uh, add up at all, um, I think uh, there are a lot of us, we all kind of tend to do this uh, when we have an opinion formed about someone and then anything bad that happens kind of fits into the form of that opinion that we've shaped about that person for good or bad. Uh, and a lot of times if it is a negative shade to the opinion, uh, then you know these crazy conspiracy things start manifesting out of nowhere and uh, you know we, we, we think that uh, one person or a group of people or the whole world is kind of out to get us and uh, in reality that's that's almost never the case um, you know in, and I think especially in a small scale in the team that we have and, and you guys have all joked and laughed and worked together and I think that you know we all value each other so uh, it's hard for me always to see um, you know one person target another person in a way that is completely unsubstantiated um, so I'm going to work to curtail that type of communication as well but ultimately guys it just comes back to if you have a problem sit down and talk about it make eye contact speak slowly speak softly um, you know, count 10 if you start to get hot. Uh, these are simple steps. These are practices that uh, are necessary, not just for, you know, just about any other job you'll ever have in life, um, but just about any relationship that you'll have. I mean, um, we just can't walk around blowing up on each other, and we certainly don't want to walk around, um, you know, sequestering an issue that we have with another person or a group of people, um, you know, for a prolonged period of time, because that that doesn't help either. That doesn't get to the root of the issues and solve the problem. Um, so, you know, I, I, I probably uh, multiple times a week, uh, especially this past week, I, I've I've had people texting me about issues with a person that they're sitting next to or that they're working on a shift with. And, it, you know, I'm a problem-solving person, but to me, if you're standing there with that person and you're texting me, uh, why aren't you talking to them? <laughs> it seems like that would be a much quicker uh, A to B. If you're actually looking for a solution... Um, to whatever the issue is that you're expressing to me, rather than you know go to go to C and speak to me and see what I can do about it, go directly to B and see if you can get the problem solved, um, and, and do it in a kind and un, a non aggressive way. And uh, I chances are the other person is going to try to see your side of it. I think we're all pretty civil in that way once we get down to talking. But if there's anything that I've learned from working with all of you over years that we've worked together or that we've known each other, um, that's that if things don't get talked about and issues arise, it's just a matter of time before the house of cards falls. And I will not let that take over the culture of our company. It's like invasion of the culture snatchers, man, and I will not let that happen here. So I'm going to continue to push that as a core pillar of our, of our core values. You cannot have teamwork without communication.
And I could go on and on about all the little things, and we could talk about the the closes, the week closes that so and so have been doing, and then sometimes they do extra and they do too much. Um, you know, we could talk about dishes, we could talk about this, that, and the other thing, but um, I'd just be hacking at the branches, guys, because I know that the root of this problem is us facilitating communication and just being open with each other. And that is what teamwork is all about. Whew. So, that being said, I think that it brings us to an opportunity to walk in on Tuesday morning on Wednesday morning, whenever the next day that you work, whenever the next day you work after hearing this, we have an opportunity to walk in to a completely renewed sense of corp company culture and teamwork in at, at Paddy Wagon. And it just starts by treating each other like human beings. And I know that that's what we all want. So I employ you and I will do the same. Reach out and talk to someone. Solve the problems that you have directly with the other person. Solve it in a civil way. Approach it with understanding and empathy in the same way that you would want someone else to approach an issue that they had with you. Critical stuff, guys. Really simple. Not always easy to do. But absolutely essential to the success of our company, short term and long term. Because if I'm answering the phone or I'm reading texts and I'm feeling that stuff in the gut of my stomach and I'm feeling paralyzed and helpless and unable to help two people who seemingly get along 80% of the time but then are going at each other's throat through me, I can't grow our business. So if you're looking for a raise or a new position or increased responsibility or any version of growth, that can't happen if I'm referee or if you guys are dealing with that. If you're breaking off into segments of a team and you know sharks and jets and, and battling each other, that, that, that will never allow us to grow. So please, try, to, try a new version. HQ 2.0. Try the new version of teamwork. Just try it for a week and see if it doesn't improve things because I guarantee that it will. And at the end of the day, we'll all be happier. We'll all feel more pride in our work and in our team. We'll probably make more money. Right now, we're just making things so much harder on ourselves than they need to be. And that's kind of my final word on that. I realize I'm a little over on the time that I usually like to keep these in. Um, so I'm going to wrap up by saying that we've got a big week. Uh, not a huge amount of hours there, but a lot going on. Um, and I'm sure we'll have some hours to fill in. But we've got good old Duck Creek Log Jam coming up on Friday and Saturday. With, of course, the pack down on Sunday back at the shop and a nice thorough clean on U Unit 3. Um, so I think just about everybody is working Duck Creek in some form or another. Um, so just wanted to talk briefly about that. Kind of threw the schedule together by default. It's in blocks. You will not work all those hours. Uh, as we get closer towards the end of the week, I'll be working with the captains on duty uh, for Duck Creek, kind of figuring out a breakout schedule. I like to keep you know short couple hour windows of time on the truck couple hours off the truck, get the chance to walk around, drink a few beers, enjoy yourself. That's, that's important to me. I and, mean, you know, working Duck Creek, you know, something that we've done as a company for six years now, um, that's always meant to be a privilege. 
uh, in a kind of a, a badge of honor, a rite of passage, if you will. Um, it, it, it's we are family down there, and um, it's a really great time. Um, that said, if you are coming to Duck Creek and you plan on camping, which I highly recommend, um, we will have electricity available in our immediate campsite area. Um, so, you know, if you if you worried about your phone being charged or you know anything like that, we'll have the ability to have a little music and all that stuff in our campsite area. Um, we'll have firewood there, hopefully. Um, so just really just bring your tent. There aren't any shower houses on site, unfortunately. Um, but, um, you know, it is just two days. There's, there's a couple ponds. There's a, a spring, a natural spring with, that is uh, great quality water. We were drinking it all last summer. It comes out of the mountain, out of the hill, ice cold. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, bring bug spray. I can't reiterate that one enough. Bring bug spray. Um, bring your own booze. Um, do not bring glass bottles. I repeat, do not bring glass bottles to Duck Creek. While our luggage is typically not searched for those kinds of things, um, it's kind of a trust thing that we will not do that. Um, so just don't do it. Cans. If you bring in liquor, put it in a flask or put it in, uh, you know, some other, like a mason jar, uh, so something that you can kind of keep concealed. Um, but, uh, you know, just try not to bring glass beer bottles. That would be the, the big thing. Um, and like I said, bring a, bring a tent, bring a sleeping bag, pillow, all that stuff. A couple changes of clothes. Uh, there's a Walmart about... 12 minutes from Duck Creek uh, by car. Um, so inevitably, we usually make a few runs there, um, mostly for ice, but hopefully the ice machine will be popping this, uh, will really be helpful for us this year. Uh, we'll also have the Duck Creek Cantina, which none of you guys need to worry about, but uh, it'll be posted up next to the truck. Um, basically, smoothies, some mixers, lemonade, tea, all the drinks will be handled over there. So you guys can focus on the food, uh, and I will be staffing that separately, so no worries on that. Uh, we will be going down Friday early afternoon. Um, it is about an hour drive. I need to get the truck on site by about 4 o'clock um, and be serving by about 6.37. Um, we'll be serving until about midnight or one, um, somewhere in there shortly after, uh, probably short, just before the last band plays and then pick up for about 20 minutes after, um, Friday, Saturday, uh, we will have the better part of the afternoon to kind of hang out, go on hikes, listen to music, float in the lake. That's another thing. If you've got an inflatable, a raft, anything like that, bring it. Um, a lot of fun to be had at just floating around on the pond and listening to some bluegrass. That's a really cool experience there in itself. Um, and then things will kick up uh, about 3 o'clock. Uh, I think the main stage area opens at 4 p.m., so that would be the time that we would need to be ready to serve by. Uh, and again, kind of the same process throughout Saturday night as well. Uh, really looking forward to it, guys. We'll have ComFest next weekend, and then things will kind of settle down a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, we've we're, we're got about three more weeks of real heavy, uh, unique experiences coming our way. So um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to showing you guys through them and, and working with you through them and, um, and for everybody to, to make a, a ton of money. Um, uh, that that's basically all I wanted to say, guys. I'm gonna try to wrap this up. 25 minutes. Sorry about that, Ant. Um, thanks, guys, and and please, you know, take a second to consider what I said. Maybe even re-listen to it. it means it's so important to me. I I'm, I am actually heartbroken uh, at the last week, and I just don't want to. Uh, to have to deal with that kind of stuff again, not just for 
for myself, but for all of you. Uh, because I know how important this company is to, to some of you as well. Uh, thanks. And uh, keep it legal. Yep, yep.